Here we go, our first battle, 2019, Matt Field and Jeff Jones, our number one qualifier, Matt Field, getting out to that touch and go. Jeff Jones in tow, little correction there from Jeff Jones in that chase position. Matt Field gets out to that second outer zone. Now transitioning into that final Black Magic clip. You can see Jeff Jones doing a really good job just tapping that front clip. Now, Ryan, make some noise. Formula Drift fans, we are officially underway of our 2019 Black Magic Pro Championship run. Also, let it be known, Jeff Jones dropped his transmission on his hand before qualifying yesterday. He is currently splinted and stitched up. So he's driving with a splintered, a splinted and a stitched up hand. Yeah, and I, I heard uh, Lorette talking to him, so I'm sure we'll get to that interview, but that was definitely big news coming out of there. And as we take a look at the battle, you can see that will be given chase. Clean start, no cones hit. Here we go, send it, fellas. Jeff Jones out of the gate. Straight line initiation, Matt Field right there. Give himself a little bit of room there. Jeff Jones gets all the way out to the touch and go. Matt Field maybe give himself a little too much room. As Jeff now goes in that second outer zone. Transitioning around that final clip. Well done by both these guys. Would have liked to see Matt apply a little more pressure, but I, I think just maybe his tentativeness because of Jeff Jones' area. Well, I, I like the aggression from Jones. He knows he's got to push. Gets out to that touch and go. You yeah. can see Field in the chase position. A little bit of a tighter line there as he tries to maintain proximity. Great job by Jones getting out to that outside zone. Here comes Field trying to dive in here, take some of that proximity away. So the judges digesting both runs. Both lead, both chases, and coming up with an ev evaluation overall who performed better. As now we get to take a look here as Jones in the lead position here with Field chasing him down. Let's see what the outcome is here. If this is your first Formula Drift round, if this is your 16th, then there it is. So, a little round of applause. And there it is. Matt Field gets the win. And away they go. Matt Kaufman using all of the course. The judges are allowing that lead car to go wherever they'd like. Chase car needs to not impede on that line. Matt Kaufman under the bridge. Whoa, look at Ken Gushi. Kaufman getting into it. Ken Gushi looks like he knocks him from the backside. We'll have to take a look at that again there, Ryan. A wide swing around that final clip. Did Kaufman do something to slow down? Did Ken Gushi apply too much pressure? Let's look at it again, Ryan. Kaufman on that wide outside line. Gucci taking a little bit shallower to keep that proximity, but then Kaufman doesn't get out to that touch and go. Gucci following close here. Looks like there may have possibly been a little bit of rubbing there. Now Kaufman gets out to that outside zone, battling back and forth here as they wrap around through this final inside clip. And Gucci right there with them towards the final part. Here it is again, right there. That's going to be the, the biggest part of that run that the judges will have to analyze and how that all played into the grand scheme of. Kaufman, uh, no spring chicken. Definitely been around a few years. Here we go, Ken Gushi. Initiates, coming into view of the judges, getting all the way out to that touch and go. Woo, blending into that white wall. Coffin back there quite a bit of distance. Now Ken Gushi, you see him make a small correction there with his front wheels. Now Coffin slides in, oh, a big straightening there by Coffin, unfortunately. And that is going to be all she wrote for Matt Coffin. I mean, that's just very definitive in that chase position. We talked about the contact on that first run, but Matt Coffin just really struggling in the chase. Well, I think you pointed out correctly exactly what's going to happen here. It was definitive right before that last inside clip. Because if you take a look at the run before that, Gushi clearly has the better lead run, right? Yeah. He got out to the touch and go, got out to that outside zone. First and second outside zone. Interpreted run one, though. I, I, in my eyes, here we go. Slide him left for Gushi or right for Matt Coffin, and there you have it. Ken Gushi will unanimously get the win. Ken Gushi gets the win. Ryan Lontain, if we could put on your headset, you're the uh, representative for the judges. How did you interpret the first run between Gucci and Kaufman? Contact was made. Was Kaufman at fault, or was Ken Gucci just being too aggressive? Yeah, we put uh, we put Kaufman at fault for that because. Okay, we did put Kaufman at fault for that because he did lift. There was a very big lift from him. You could see the smoke line breaking as soon as uh, Kaufman lifted there after outside zone one and Gushi had nowhere to go. We tell the chase driver to be close and uh, Gushi was doing what he was told to do in that area and he did what was right. He stayed on throttle until uh, he couldn't, you know, at the very last second when Kaufman did slow down. They did make contact, but we did put that uh, totally on Kaufman at that, at that point. So good for them for getting through the run and thankfully there was no damage to either car.
Stratton Chevrolet Corvette, Chris Fors, Chris the Force Forsberg, NOS Energy Drink 370Z, changing up his engine packages here. Let's see how he Stratton, as Forsberg gets all the way out to that touch and go, handles it, no problem, under the bridge. Dirk Stratton, you can see back quite a bit of distance. Forsberg, a lot of equity here. Again, another Formula Drift veteran. Dirk Stratton, large correction and straightening past that front clip. Forsberg gets the clean air. Perfect run there for Forsberg. Well, seeing a big mistake down towards that last inside clip. Here's the start, Jared. Forsberg back on throttle, pushing out to that touch and go. Almost gets out there, but look at Stratton starting to fall behind. He's on a much tighter line. He wasn't following Forsberg out to that section of the course. Now watch Stratton as he falls further behind. He's going to straighten out right here through that last inside clip and then kind of have to reinitiate. So I think that's going to be a big detriment in terms of his chase run. He wasn't keeping the proximity on. He wasn't putting a lot of pressure on Chris. Chris had a pretty decent lead run. He could have done a little bit better in, in other places, but I think because of the chase overall, almost any vehicle and make it an awesome drift car. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Dirk Stratton out front. Chris Forsberg in the chase position. The needle is definitely going away. Dirk needs to do something sensational in order to take down the three-time champ. Dirk under the bridge. Chris Forsberg in that chase position. You can see him just maneuver just enough to keep proximity and now switches over into that final clip. And that's gonna be all she wrote, unfortunately, for Dirk Stratton. But Chris the Force Forsberg will be advancing on in my eyes. Well, Forsberg here in the chase position. Watch this, Jared. He's gonna get a little bit tight coming through that, uh, that first section of the course there. But he's keeping the pressure on, stays with Stratton. Stratton having a, a, a tough time in his chase position. Better around the second time in the lead. But uh, Forsberg just a bit too strong here in his chase on the side-by-side -side comparison. I mean, I'm just looking through, uh, to be honest, you know, announcing, announcing the qualifying yesterday. I'm just looking at this bracket, and it is just racked with talent and just the, the, the pairing up of drivers. It's, it's pretty awesome. So uh, let's see. And Chris Forsberg gets the win. Chris Forsberg gets the win. We'll take a short break. When we come back, more Top 32 action. We drive them very, very differently. I mean, that's one of the great things about the sport, right? The different styles that they bring to the table. thousand percent. Here we go. Chelsea Denofa and Pat Racing. Ford Performance. Mustang gets all the way out there. Pat Gooden right there in the mix. Chops it over. Transition. You can see didn't get all the way out to that first outer zone. Pat Gooden in the chase position. And now Chelsea brings it around that final front clip. Let them know you're here in Long Beach and across the globe. Hashtag FDLB. Denofa and Gooden. Well, a pretty murderous lead run right there by Chelsea Denofa. Nice snap into initiation. Pat Gooden trying to keep him close. Watch Denofa get out to this touch and go. Great job there, just about three inches away. Really good job on that first outside zone. And look at this, scraping the wall on the second outside zone. Now sweeping through that final touch and go and right through that last inside clip. A good job by Pat Gooden trying to keep him close, but you can see the separation here. Pat has to take a little bit of a different approach in trying to close that door. And as he came through the smoke line, he... So you, you get you get settled. You know, Vaughn, Vaughn, Vaughn liked it. Chelsea, it worked for him. They got in the box, so, and especially at Irwindale. Here we go, Pat Gooden out front. Chelsea Nofa in the chase position to keep his tires. Get lit up by Passionate Pat, the king of spring break. Gets into that first outer zone. Chelsea Nofa, the purple nose, into the side of the S chassis. And now we can swing it around that final black magic front clip and you can see Chelsea just almost nudging the side of Pat's vehicle let's take a look at it again here Ryan yeah here it is from initiation Pat Gooden right there nice little snap to Nova right behind him now he starts closing the door looking for that opportunity follows the line that Pat takes right there Pat does a great job getting out to that first outside zone a little bit off that second outside zone so think about back to Chelsea's lead run and as we wrap around that last inside clip there, you can see that Denofa keeps the pressure on. Going on board here with Johnny, FPV in the drone. Glad to see Woo. that being implemented here. And it really left for Pat Gooden or right for Chelsea Denofa. And Chelsea Denofa unanimously gets the win. There you go. Chelsea Denofa moves on to the top 16. But uh, he is the lone Canadian driver. Registered this year. Here we go. Daijiro Yoshihara out front. Sebastian Gauthier quickly gets nose to tail. Now Dai gets out there. Sebastian Gauthier not too shabby. Well done by Gauthier. On that transition, you can see him drop in. Oh, but then just as I say that, Gauthier takes a shower line, just grips up towards the middle of the track. And Daijiro Yoshihara 
regardless of what is happening behind him, Gossi had made that mistake, and the needle will go the direction of Dejo Yoshihara. Well, the smoothness was really apparent from Dai yesterday in qualifying, continuing that base. Gossi keeping the pressure on here as they leave that first outside zone, but right there, that big mistake. And that's going to be an incomplete for Gautier, so that's going to be an advantage for Dai going into run number two. Yeah, that's a massive advantage there for Daichiro Yoshihara. Here we go. Sebastian goes to have from Daichiro Yoshihara. Sebastian gets all the way out there. Like I said, Dai Yoshihara potentially playing a little bit cautious. He knows he has an advantage here. He's not going to sandbag. We need an active chase. And Gautier is putting on a great lead run here. Oh, and Dai Yoshihara! Comes to a halt, and that could, that could unfortunately, but again, lead versus lead, chase versus chase. Ryan. Wow, so we had an incomplete from Gautier in run number one in the chase position, right? And it looks like an incomplete from Dai in the chase position on the second run. Now that would mean that the judges are going to be evaluating the two lead runs. Now if that does happen, you have to think back to how Dai's lead run would compare to Gautier's lead run, and that still may give Dai an advantage. But Sebastian had a really good lead run. He did. He did. So now it's going to come down to the comparison of the leads. Beautiful day here in Long Beach. Got fans uh, hanging out in the balconies. Okay, slide him. Okay, look at that. Ryan says Daijiro Yoshihara, Andy, and Brian. Andy says one more time, and then Brian Eggert says one more time. Here we go. So we got Justin Pollock and Alec Honadel. Justin Pollock in this Roush performance. Falcon tires for Mustang Alec Honadel in the ISR S14. Pollock, massive angle. Honadel, a big correction there from the Floridian as JTP. Not affected by the mistake of Alec Honadel. You see him punting that front clip. Ryan Sage, a big mistake there from Honadel as they exited that touch and go. Yeah, it was a big mistake there. Let's take a look at this initiation. Honadale does a great job sticking with them on that line on initiation, but right here as they leave that touch and go, he's going to straighten up in the chase position. Big angle by JTP, shooting out towards that outside zone number two. Honadale back on it, keeping the pressure on, and now wrapping through that final inside clip. You can see Honadale surges forward, taps that final inside clip. And going on board here, you get to see that perspective of that chase driver driving right up to the lead driver there. Amazing job by Johnny. Honadale waiting patiently, and now looks like a clean start. Here we go, Honadale, the second half of this battle. Honadale out front, flying across the nose. Oh, and JTP, look at this. Flies the pressure, but stays in it. Oh, he is riding on that, staying on it. So some contact there. Ryan, what went down quickly out of the gate?
Cannondale straightening out. But let's get Ryan on. Uh, Ryan, if you can kind of walk us through some of the thought process that you've had so far watching these replays. It looked like in that situation, Hanadel was in the, in, in the right, you know, he had all the, all the uh, room to do his initiation that he wanted to do. And JTP was a little bit next to him. And you could see that as Hanadel initiated, he did his little, uh, his little counter flick before he initiated. And JTP was right there. JTP had to turn away from Hanadel and it looked like it threw off JTP's timing, and maybe his initiation was yeah. a little bit later than it should have been because of that. And uh, when he got sideways, you could see that he over-rotated, and maybe that was due to him coming in a little bit too fast, and he had to get on the brakes to try to get the car slowed down, and the car over-rotated. He hit with the back first, actually, instead of the front, uh, and then it kind of uh, waterfalled from there into the crash that we saw, you know? So... Uh, I think, in my perspective, JTP is uh, totally at fault there. Um, and uh, it's going to be up to the other judges to see what they decide. They're actually going, they're going against each other. So here is Honadel and Pollock. Ryan says one more time. Andy says one more time. They're going one more time. And that was kind of where, where in your heart of hearts, you were leaning, leaning towards, and not even hearts. Odie Bakshi's just uh, that, that classic S chassis and uh, old, old, old reliable, old faithful. Here we go. Odie Bakshi throws it in. And Odie gets all the way out to that touch and goes just a hair shy as Federico. You can see him transition a lot earlier than that of Odie Box. She's allowing him to gain that proximity here through that sweeper and into that second outer zone. And now in that final clip, textbook move there by Odie Box. She's Federico a little shallow. You can see him just nudging that Black Magic front clip out of the way. Here we look at it again, Ryan. Well, Odie has been on fire this weekend. Great qualifying yesterday. Sharifo trying to keep pace here as Odie reaches out to that outside zone or that outside touch and go. Sharifo on a little bit of a different line, really tight here on the proximity, but Odie out front, you can see he's filling everything that he needs to do as a lead driver, those goals that Ryan Lantane talked about. Sharifo there, a good fight. Now coming through this center section, right through the bridge, you can see Sharifo on board there. Good proximity here, and Odie out front with that nice lead run. For Federico, slide him right for Odie Bakshis. Ryan says Odie Bakshis, as does Brian and Andy says. It's unanimous, Odie Bakshis gets the win. And away they go. All right, Dai Yoshihara will lead Sebastian Gauthier in the chase position. This one more time battle. Who's going to come out on top? Both initiating. No, ma no major mistakes. And just as I say that, Sebastian, middle of the course, very shallow line. Dai Yoshihara is definitely going to have the advantage here. There is a touch and go there. Sebastian really struggling in that chase position. And Dai Yoshihara wraps it around. Another advantage and another disadvantage in that chase position. Ryan, a lot of these drivers are struggling in the chase. Yeah, the chase uh, really becoming very challenging for some drivers here. Gote for a second time, an incomplete in the chase run. We're seeing Dai get out to that touch and go very nicely. Great job on that first outside zone. The second outside zone, pretty clean as well. So Dai continuing to build momentum here, trying to peak at the right time. And he's doing a great job in the top 32 so far. Sebastian Gote is really going to have to push here on his lead run. See that perspective there from the drone. Johnny, our drone driver, getting up in the mix. All right, so... There might be a bigger issue for Sebastian Gauthier than uh, just struggling because he just called the competition timeout. That is a five-minute allotment. Driving a vehicle that looks familiar to all you Formula Drift fans if you've been following the championship for a while, utilizing the S14 of Forrest Wang. Mitch Larner, Get Nuts Lab, WA Performance, Achilles Radial S14, coming to us from Perth, which is the, uh, the west coast of the continent of Australia. Straya, mate. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. No, you don't like that? You don't like that, Greg? No? You're British, what do you know? <laughs> Here we go. Michael Essa out front who qualified 12th. Mitch Larner qualifying 21st. And Essa gets all the way out to the touch and go. Mitch Larner doing a good job. One of the best chase runs we've seen so far. Essa out to that second outer zone and one more clip. And you can see Mitch, whoa, going for it. He punched that clip and looks like he was going right to the backside of Essa's BMW. Well, Mitch Larner making that mistake towards that last inside clip. Let's take a look here. Very aggressive. Has some angle in the car, then has to pull out. Michael Essa out front, really smooth. Just a little bit off that first outside zone, but you can see great throttle control from Essa. 
leaving that second outside zone. Now watch Larner on the inside here. He's just going to come up a little bit too tight and hit that inside clip. And unfortunately, and looks like we are clear to go. Larner through the chicane. Clean start. Larner throws it in. Yes, they give himself a bit of distance here. These guys obviously have never gone against each other as this is Larner's first ever Formula Gym Pro round. And Larner gets all the way up to that second zone. Essa, a little bit of a buffer. Now forges an attack around that final clip. Brian Sage, what do you say? Well, a good battle here. Mitch with that mistake. Can he make it up in his lead position? Gets that initiation, throttle on, headed towards that outside. Touch and go, doesn't get out there. Essa keeping pace with them. Larner, better job on that second outside zone. Here comes Essa closing the door. Wrapping through this final inside clip, a clean finish there with Essa door to door through the finish line. So great job there on board here with the racing drone coming through the bridge. You can see Essa eyeing that opportunity to attack. He starts surging forward, backs off for a second, and then transitions into that final inside clip. All right, awaiting for the verdict. Slide him left for Larner, right for Michael Essa. Ryan says, Andy, and Brian says, Michael Essa gets the win. Essa advances on. He will be going against Odie Bakshis in top 16. All right. Unfortunately, Sebastian Gauthier was not able to fix his vehicle. So this means Daijiro Yoshihara. little celebratory buy run for the FD veteran. Dai Yoshihara will get the win. And he's going to light up the Falcon tires. Show you that his car is up and running, up to snuff, and ready to do battle. So Dai Yoshihara will move on. Ripping through that final front clip. And that'll seal the deal for the FD veteran of Daijiro Yoshihara. Moving on, who he's to go against is still TBD to be decided. And we got a clean start. James Dean out front, the machine. Kyle Mohan looks like he is does not initiate James Dean. Comes off that touch and go into that first outer zone. Into the second outer zone. And one more front clip. And unfortunately for the rotary. All right, so we are finding out the start was clean. That is Kyle Mohan. Failure to launch and failure to initiate. So that is going to be a major mistake there for Mohan as we look at it again. Yeah, unfortunately, Mohan just does not initiate at all, and so that's going to be an incomplete on run one. Dean, as you know, as a lead driver, needs to make it through in order to get the run to be counted as a complete run. He does do that, so we'll have an incomplete for Kyle Mohan, and for Dean, it will be a full pull and an advantage going into run number two. Let's see if we have a victor from these two gentlemen. Looks like we got a clean start, no cones were hit. But one more time battle between Pollock and Honadel. Pollock initiates, Honadel really applying the pressure. You can see, you can see the car, the attitude of Honadel's vehicle, really wishy-washy, but Pollock very settled. Now Honadel lunges forward, but now goes the wrong direction. Like I said, Honadel he did call his competition timeout, Ryan, so if he has an issue, he cannot call another comp timeout. Well, he did improve on that first mistake that happened right about here, but as you said, he still seems a little bit unsettled. Pollock, meanwhile, out front looking pretty solid here, but great job on this section of the course by Honadale to keep the pressure on, keep that proximity there. At least that gives him a fighting chance, but then right here, he has that big understeer, and he has to come out of the drift. And unfortunately... Justin Pollock taking a solo run to a racing tape all over the front end of the vehicle. It's a good opportunity for him to get a feel for the track once again. And he does just that. But right now it's all about Castro and Carney. Castro on the Toyota Racing Toyota 86. He'll lead as that Viper throws it in the twin turbo dodge Viper of Carney. Castro doesn't get all the way up to touch and go. A really shallow line allows Carney to really flex on him. 
And now into that final clip goes both the vehicles. Carney takes out that front clip. Great execution by Carney. Some mistakes by Castro allowing Carney to really flex on him. Yeah, take a look here as Castro comes into initiation. You can see that, that hold up, then he gets back on throttle. Now watch right here. As he transitions, he's going to kind of stall for a second. Carney almost, almost hits him, has to make an, uh, an adjustment. And then Carney is on a, on a lower line there, so the judges will definitely take that into consideration as now they've wrapped through that final inside clip. Here it is. You can see Carney on that tighter line coming <coughs> from uh, the uh, first outside zone where we saw that little bit of slowdown there for Castro. And remember, Ryan Lantane pointed out exactly where those decel areas are. Well, Castro rise to the occasion. We have seen it in years past. And here goes Dean. Tip to tail. Both initiating simultaneously. Dean just a bit short of that touch and go, but then flexing on into that first outer zone. Castro, he is right next to Dean Carney. Oh, and then Castro rotates. He spins, comes to a halt. Let's take a look at this again here, Ryan. Yeah. Dean Carney and Castro initiate together, and then Castro falls back for a second. Carney getting out to that touch and go about a foot or so away. Same on that first outside zone. Here comes Castro pouring on the pressure. Big smoke line right there, and then Castro gets unwound right before the finish line. And here we go on board as Castro surging towards that last section. All right, so slide him left for Dean Carney, right for Jonathan Castro. And it looks like the Irish driver will get the victory. Dean Carney gets the win. All right, here we go. Kyle Mohan out front, James Dean in that chase position. Oh, and Kyle Mohan, you can see. A slow roll there on initiation. James Dean keeps his composure, though. Now transitions. Yeah, outer zone. Now in the second outer zone. The drone in tow. And around that final clip. Oh, and Kyle Mohan rotates. Let's see where the contact. It looks like a right might, after might have some contact. Oh, oh, there's definitely contact. There's no question about that. We're going to see it on that last inside clip. Now, what the judges are going to have to look at here is was the contact by Dean the causal reason why Mohan did not complete the run. Watch right here, coming through the smoke line is Dean, right there, Oof. and then you see Mohan spin. Now, we got a, <laughs> a real interesting situation on our hands here because you have Mohan that had an incomplete in the chase position, right? Yeah. You have Dean that if this is indeed uh, his fault that causes Mohan not to finish the run, then that would be an incomplete for Dean it would still go back to the lead runs. Right. It would still go back to the lead runs. This seems to be a continuing trend. What's that going we're, on here? <laughs> yes. It's, so it's, it, would, it would be evaluation of the leads in this particular circumstance. So uh, obviously that means the judges will have to make the decision off of who had the better of the two leads. So Dean might scrape through here because of that, but uh, definitely flirting with disaster if uh, indeed he is at fault here for the Look at uh, that is a decel zone that uh, Kyle Mohan was in at that point, but 
it's not meant to be an extreme slowdown. It's not meant to be an area where the car can come to a crawl. It's supposed to be a slowdown and then get, uh, while maintaining that, that level of momentum, getting through the corner and getting back on so. throttle to the finish. And it, uh, you know, watching that replay, especially that camera that's looking right at the inside clip, you can see that Kyle comes to a crawl right there. And that is not what we're expecting in terms of a slowdown. So in my personal opinion, he slowed down too much, was off the inside clip, and uh, James Dean, who was very close throughout that run, just had nowhere to go. All right, so this is Ryan Literal. Ryan Literal in his new livery, run that power stop brakes. Set up offered by Cora Works. And Literal ripping through the course. The Cora Works power stop next in tire, Nissan 350Z. as Ryan Literal gets the fast pass into the top 16, right? Yeah, it's a tough break for Ryan Turk. That's who he was supposed to go up against. Rad Industries, Toyota Supra. All right, Frederick Osborne out of the gate. Rockstar Energy. Next to tires, Toyota Corolla hatchback into the touch and go. Dan Burkett not getting out there, now dives in. Out to the outer zone, Frederick Osbo putting on a clinic. And now, Rad Dan, you can see him lunging forward, almost narrowly escaping some contact there, Ryan. Yeah, well, Osbo, as we mentioned last year many times, he really knows how to peak at the right, at the right time. And after coming through qualifying, qualifying outside the top five, looking very strong here in the lead position. Dan, you can see, he was a bit unsettled. He was trying to find the right speed to chase Osbo, had to back off cut the line a little bit, then we see almost a little bit of rubbing there towards that last inside clip. Now coming through the bridge, you can see right here, Dan's trying to figure out where he needs to go to follow Osbo, and Osbo is way out to that outside touch and go. Dan's on the inside here, and uh, he's having to make some adjustments, so he does. All right, two great looking Toyotas shining in the sun here on the streets of Long Beach. Dan Burkett will lead Frederick Osbo. We'll give chase, we got a clean start. Dan Burkett. Not all the way out to the touch and go. A little bit of distance off, but man, Frederick Osbo shadowing the Toyota Supra of Burkett. Now into that final clip. And it looks like Frederick Osbo will make quick work of Dan Burkett, but a great effort by Dan Burkett and really getting that Supra where it needs to be. Yeah, it was really enjoyable to see him uh, preparing for the 2000. In 19 season here, making it happen at Long Beach, but going up against the second place driver in the 2018 championship, Frederick Osbo, no easy task. You can see Osbo really doing a great job in the chase position, staying right in that smoke line with Dan Burkett, following him like a moving clipping point. As we go on board here, you can see heading out to outside zone two, Osbo just right on. With the outcome, slide him left for Burkett, right for Frederick Osbo. Ryan says Osbo, as does Andy. And Brian, Frederick Osbo and the Rockstar Energy Drink. Next in tires, Toyota Corolla Hatchback gets the victory. Very familiar and comfortable behind the wheel of that S15 Silvia. Pieter qualifying third. And here comes Vista. Look at that. Swing. Austin Meeks quite a bit of distance back. And look at Peter. P Peter putting it on the wall in that touch and go. Gets that first outer zone into that second outer zone. Ticking all the boxes is the candy man around that final front clip. Ryan, I, I, I truly think that Peter Visick is, is, might take this thing all the way. Well, he's definitely looking on point here, and look how quickly he gets out of the gate. Now, he is not running a rate away here. He's establishing this gap, but still getting very wide in all areas of the course that are required. Touching the wall. Slamming it through that final outside touch and go. Perfect on that inside clip. And uh, Meeks was playing catch up the whole time. You can see Meeks not even in view here. And Peter Visek is just blowing doors here as he reaches out to that touch and go. We can see on board here with the drone just how quick. Through the start chicane, here comes Meeks at Ferocious Motorsports. Cadillac ATS, Peter Visek. <laughs> I thought he might back off, but he is not at all. Visek right there on the door of the Cadillac. 
Visick on to Meeks around that final clip. Ryan, I'm telling you, Pieter is one to watch here in Long Beach. Yeah, he is really looking solid, and uh, even here in the 32, he is pushing the limits. Meeks hopping through the course here, not able to get to that touch and go, but now picking up the pace here. But look at this, Peter Visek not afraid to go door to door right from outside zone number two. And then right there, just a little bit of separation there towards the end. So great job by Meeks to battle back. But really, Visek is just looking on point today, Jared. Flowing through from media day into yesterday's qualifying and into today, looking very strong and consistent. All right, slide them left for Meeks or right for Piotr Visek. Piotr gets the win. All right, so Hilbrun will lead in that Inca Madness Racing Nitto Tire BMW. Both these guys on Nitto Tires. And here we go. That Napoleon Motorsports S13 of Travis Reeder quickly gets to the side of Alex Hilbrun. Wow, look at that. Hilbrun exploding that back bumper. Really getting close to that, that first outer zone and now brings it around. Great job but there by Hilbrun. Hilbrun going into outside zone number one, but looking unfazed. Look at Reeder right there, pushing the pace on initiation. Falls back for a second. Looks like Reeder may have gotten into the wall too. Here is Hilbrun hitting that. Outside zone, now getting to that second outside zone. Both drivers surging through the course. Here comes Reeder, final attack through that last inside clip. A good battle here in the top 32. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hearing from uh, somebody who works on Reeder's car. He is down horsepower quite a bit. All right, here we go. Reeder and Hilbrun. The second half of this battle. Reader needs to throw it down here. He's got Hilbrun in his rear view here. And Hilbrun does exactly that. Reader gets all the way up to that touch and go. Transition into that second outer zone. Well done by Reader, but cannot shake Hilbrun. Hilbrun. Oh, and Hilbrun loses it. Reader very, very well might get the victory here, Ryan. Reader uh, looked uh, phenomenal in that second run, Jared. Let's take a look here again. Reader initiates Hilbrun. Trying to stay door to door, heading out to that outside touch and go. Nice job by Reader. Look at this outside zone. Boom, great job yeah. by Reader. And you could see that Hilbrun was on a little bit of a shallower line there. Now Hilbrun keeping the pace, circling back around, surging forward, and not able to hold it through that last inside clip. Yeah, taking a look at this again. Look at Johnny getting up close and personal. Some contact, so right. There wasn't, seeing some body parts come off there. Lantain, uh, you have your headset on there. We're, we're, we're taking a look at the, at the replay. What'd you guys see? Saw a little bit of contact as they were coming up to touch and go number two. It looked like Helbrun just got himself positioned in the wrong place. Travis Reeder was doing what he was supposed to do in the lead position. He uh, didn't slow down aggressively, didn't slow down too much for that decel area. He was back on throttle and he flowed through inside clip two, or sorry, inside clip one to the finish line. So have to put that on, um, on Helbrun in terms of that uh, mistake. Yeah, that was just such a, a simple thing that uh, Alex Hilbrun could have avoided, but just too aggressive there into that final clip. <laughs> Travis Reeder or Alex Hilbrun slide him left for Travis Reeder gets the win. Here we go, four swing out front, both these guys on Achilles radials. Forrest all the way out to the touch and go. Scrapes that 2F Super Duke bumper. Taylor Hall does not back down as Forrest Wang approaching that final front clip. And Forrest Wang, massive angle there, brings it around. Ryan, let's take a look at it again. I see you, uh, see you shaking your head. You liking that or loving it? Or? I'm shaking my head at something else. But this is a great job by Forrest out front. Unbelievable lead run. Nice and deep into the wall there on the touch and go. Great job on that outside zone. Hull wow. has looked incredible all weekend Sick. long. 
trying to put it together here in the top 32 against Forrest Wang, surging through that last inside clip. And here we are, heading out to outside zone two. Look at Forrest scraping that outside zone. This looks a lot like his qualifying run yesterday. He came out with a fury. He loves his track. This and Irwin Diller is two. Taylor Hole will lead in this comp cams. Cadillac, ATSV, Forrest Wing in that chase position. Taylor Hole throws it in. Nice job by Hull. Get that touch and go. It's that first outer zone under the bridge. Forrest Wing shadowing Taylor Hull. Really good execution. Giving him some distance and then just wraps him around. That, that, that was a little nervous there. I mean, you know, it's, it's nerve wracking that, that final front clip. Yeah, well, let's take a look at this here. The final half of this battle in the top 32. Now, I think from the onset, Forrest definitely has the better of the two leads. He was deeper into the touch and go and outside zone one. Forrest keeping the pace here. I think the scales are tipping in his favor. And this final turn right there, a good push by Forrest. Taylor Hull, great campaign in Long Beach. Incredible way to finish last season and coming out strong this year with his comp cams vehicle. Looking incredible in qualifying and putting up a good show here in the top 32, but now it's time to turn to the judges. All right, let's see. Taylor Hull, Forrest Wang, slide him left for a hole, right for Wang. Ryan says Forrest Wang, as does Andy. And Brian says, Forrest Wang gets the win. Who's going to move on? Vaughn Ginn Jr., the Monster Energy Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D on Nitto Tires. Kazuya Taguchi, the Up Garage Achilles Radio. Oh, and Kazuya. You see him just throw too much angle at it as Vaughn Ginn Jr., the professional fun haver, continues on pace through the course. Vaughn Ginn Jr. brings it around and puts a bow on it. Great execution there by Vaughn Gittin Jr. Because we are having that hiccup there on entry. Well, Jared, you, you know how important it is to basically be on point at all moments in competition. Taguchi starts off strong, but right here makes this little bit of a mistake. You can see he angles up, and Vaughn is gone. Vaughn heads out to that outside zone number two with a good distance there between him and Taguchi. Taguchi smartly trying to close that gap by taking a shorter line. And uh, he was able to do a little bit of uh, repair work there. But you can see he angles up coming out of turn nine and then really loses traction to uh, Vaughn Gittin Jr. And uh, Vaughn with a pretty decent lead run there will now switch. Activation area. So go meet Green Vaughn Gittin Jr. and his RTR teammate, Chelsea Nope. Kazuya Taguchi out front. Up the rise of Healy's radial. GTR. And Kazuya get all the way out to that touch and go. Looking a lot more comfortable out front. And Vaughn, right there on the door of the GTR. One final clip for both these drivers. And Kazuya, with that mistake on his first run, had a, I mean, he had a great run right there, by the way, Ryan, but that mistake on the first run is going to be the nail in the coffin for him. Yeah, the lead run, he comes back pretty strong here, Jared. But uh, that first run, as you said, I mean, look at that. And right out to the touch and go. Beautiful job by Taguchi, but Gittin is really not letting him get away. Gittin on a little bit of a shallower line there to outside zone two. Trying to keep pace with Taguchi, but I think that the scale is a tip just a bit too much in Vaughn's uh, side of things because of that mistake in the chase position by Taguchi. As we go on board here, you can see both drivers just really pushing wide out to that outside touch and go two. And uh, wrapping things the O'Reilly Auto Parts, the streets of Long Beach, presented by Permatex. And there it is. Let's make it official. Vaughn Gittin Jr. gets the win and advances on into the top 16. All right, so the action continues when we come back for the halftime show. Again, the O'Reilly Auto Parts, streets of Long Beach, presented by Permatex, round one of the Formula Jet Black Magic Pro Championship. <laughs> 